No, because they clips if it's too close. This is actually perfect. Hi, Ryan. You're in the If you're walking around, it's not like we're doing anything super. How long is it? 45 minutes. Maybe? Your YouTube is Earthstar? Yeah. Earthstar, who is? I can't see. Hi, Sora.
Hello everybody. It's so nice to be here with you. It's been quite a little while and so much has transpired. I switched mics here, so just let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm gonna just put this here. So just let me know that you can hear me okay. And we will, thank you. Okay. Oh, I missed singing so much. <laughs> it's been a little while. Okay, let's see. Is my head still in? Okay, great. Whew, okay, so we're gonna hop in and get started. Let's just all take a moment. Just breathe into heart space for a little bit and land here together before the solstice gateway, before the second eclipses that are here. We have quite some things that I, I'm delighted um, and it's kind of difficult to share with you all and I know that many of you were very present and with me and Kara in the process of my pregnancy. So I really wanted to, and she really wanted to um, share these vibrations <laughs> and these stories and these teachings that have been coming through and been integrating over the last little while. So I'm very excited to be here with you all. I feel like we are family. And it is just good to be together in this extraordinarily intense time of birth and death and initiation for all of us. So just to take a minute and we're going to land here in the space together, coming into our heart space, feeling so much love, feeling an opening. Just take a deep breath. and sending some energy down through our lower chakras, down all the way into the earth, connecting into Gaia, into our mother consciousness with our subtle perceptive consciousness feelers, tuning into a more subtle field of reality. And just know that um, I think that the most important thing that I am feeling these days is this deep integration and groundedness into, you know, our purpose. Like after all of the th these things that have happened, um, I'm just, you know, thinking so much about life itself <laughs> and what life is and how precious it is and how we can spend our time in ways that um, disrespect life and not take it seriously or not treasure it like the precious thing that it is, our experience, our life. And so it's gotten me to think a lot about my life purpose and all the life that exists on this planet and the state of life that is in existence and more than anything, what I would like to do with my life and my time because it is so precious. And so for me, I feel like this triple eclipse window um, it's really giving us the alignments and the initiation, our true purpose on this planet. And, you know, I feel like it doesn't always have to be this intense punch in the face or initiation. Like sometimes we can just make the decision or realize, make the realization that there is something very serious happening on our planet. And I feel like that's probably what I'm going to focus on today because I do want to share my presence at this time of intensity for my starseed family, my light work family out there. Um, that, you know, time and life goes on and that we, when we 
that we still have a really big job to do. <laughs> we really, really do. And so I do want to share a little bit about, you know, the things that I realize, but predominantly I really want to focus on, you know, the living, like what is still alive in us, what is alive on the planet and how we can really be of service and be of guardianship to life because really that's what we're doing. And it is this deep groundedness, this deep integration um, that kind of peeling away from the sparkly false spirituality that sometimes can be addictive. So um, I do want to just share about Kara because I really want to take this opportunity to remember her and send beautiful prayers to her because she was and still is truly an incredible being. So when I was pregnant with her, about three months in is when I started to communicate with her being. This is when I started to consciously um, bring her through and I've done many shamanic journeys out into the cosmos, um, I feel that when you are psychically open and are connected to your starseed lineage, and this is like kind of what I do for a living, it's like a very integrated part of my reality, um, it felt very normal to communicate with her spirit just like we communicate with, you know, the guides of my clients and the gu guides of Lynn and different spirits. It just felt like a very normal process to me. So, um, I started doing these journeys to see the path that she was taking to get to earth. And so from that, from these experiences, I learned that she, um, so in this one journey specifically, I flew up out um, into the crab nebula and I started communicating with the crab nebula as a collective consciousness, like as if it was a person, like it had a personality and it had a soul, like the whole entirety of this nebula was a being. And it told me that um, currently the job of this ne nebula was to radiate the earth with gamma rays to assist um, us in planetary DNA activation. I was bewildered by this and then she told me that actually Kara was passing through her and it was almost like she was going to grab a chunk of this nebula and bring it to earth and it would be like having a piece of this nebula here again to assist with our planetary DNA activation and when I um, when it showed me this planetary DNA activation I actually saw a vision of an extraordinarily beautiful orangutan with like just like pure light sparkles in his eyes. Um, and to me, it rep represented this awakening of, of consciousness, not just like awareness and intelligence, but a deep heart connection to life itself. And I'm going to go into this because I think this is the most important thing that we need to talk about right now is that we can be alive our entire life and not truly live not truly feel the immenseness and the beauty and the light and the brilliance and the complexity and the genius of life itself. And when I saw this vision of this orangutan, you know, a lot of people think these are, you know, primal or primitive beings. But what I saw was that, you know, the animal consciousness was coming to a place of, you know, awareness of self as divine as well. And that, you know, it's the humans that are actually learning from the Gaia consciousness and reconnecting. And there's a deep humility um, in stepping back into harmony with the earth. And of course, reclaiming this deep heart connection to life itself. And of course, you know, we never meant to um, forget this. It was never intended for us to not be connected to this. But unfortunately, we do have to realize that the situation on the earth right now is that, you know, the collective culture is very much influenced by disconnection. And if we want to go even further, we can say that it is quite a um, satanic culture. And I explain this in detail um, in my sexuality and creation workshop. If you haven't seen that, it's just the last video that I streamed on my YouTube account. But um, what I mean by that 
I will just explain this again because it's quite simple. You know, there's a lot of disclosure videos and people talking about this and that. I mean, child trafficking is really no secret on this planet. Everybody knows about it. Everybody knows about it and kind of ignores it and just pushes it to the side because they think, oh, well, it's not going to happen to me in my neighborhood. It's happening in Thailand or something. But everybody knows that child trafficking is a thing. And then what happens, like if child trafficking and child sex trafficking is a thing, that means that child pedophilia is a thing. It's like, you know, not again, no secret. It's just something that we all, you know, kind of know on the peripheries of our consciousness. You know, when I was growing up, my parents would be like, don't go outside by yourself. You're going to get kidnapped, right? Like we have this collective subconscious fear we understand and we know that this is a thing that happens on planet well um, how and why has this happened it's really important for us to fully awaken at this time because the planet is calling us life itself is calling us and we like to call ourselves spirit um, spiritual <laughs> we really like to call ourselves light workers and star seeds well what does it actually really take to be you know a light warrior at this time what does it take does it take us reading our facebook posts and drinking our fancy reishi mushroom coffee in the morning and then doing yoga and then playing with crystals or does it really require us to you know totally do those things and get really honest and lucid about where we are and what we're doing here on this planet and it's like we can post Facebook articles about disclosure and pedophilia and these things. We can post articles on our social media, but how integrated are we in our present moment of that fact? Or do we just kind of go back to our normal life? Go, you know, go shopping and buy unsustainable clothing so that, you know, we can just mentally know these things and kind of rub it in other people's faces. So what does it take to be a light warrior at this time well is um, this deep realization right it starts with oneness oneness means that when we zoom out of our selfness and we merge our energy back with everything um, this is kind of like you know when we say 5d consciousness or fourth density we're beginning to experience this unity amongst living beings when we're in 3d we think we're separate you know this person has a body that's completely unrelated to this one and some people don't even believe that we can actually feel another person's feelings but we we totally can right so as we move up in the dimensional scale and the densities we experience this oneness in a much greater sense so eventually as we continue to zoom out what happens is that that we realize that our consciousness is actually entirely in oneness with everything, with all of consciousness. So when we make that realization, we notice that like if a pedophile lived on this planet, if um, a rape victim lived on this planet, if somebody is um, experiencing great pain on this planet, that is actually a part of us experiencing it like we are really not separate and that's always the thing that i come back to as to why it didn't make sense to me that you know there are some light workers that channel information about okay the light workers are going to ascend to you know this place and everybody else is going to go to this other place you know and and we're just going to exist side by side like new earth is going to be over here and other people are going to suffer and i mean i know deep inside myself that that is not why i have come to this planet I know that I have come here to assist in the, the, the healing and the liberation of humanity and this planet, right? And that really involves coming into integration and lucidity that there is something that extraordinarily odd going on on this planet and that we really need to begin to get strong, get courageous and to look at that thing straight on and we can do this you know inside and out and so I feel like what propels me in that mission is continually continually opening my heart to the 
beauty and the divinity and the exquisiteness of life itself. And I feel that one of the main lessons in the physical reality that I've learned over this experience with Kara leaving her physical body is that, you know, life is so precious. And because, you know, I have not come into close contact with death before, right? The last person in my family that was close to me that passed was my grandpa, and that was like when I was five. So I really didn't have, you know, a lot of thoughts or consciousness around this subject. And you know that, you know, she was only here with us for nine days, and it was, let's just say that birthing was honestly the best experience of my entire life. And I feel that, you know, through this birth and death initiation, I'm just seeing so lucidly how we as a society are so severed from both of those things. And actually, because we're severed from life itself, because we don't truly treasure life itself, we have this distorted fear towards death. We don't talk about it. We don't want to die. We're scared of dying. We think that death is the end. Um, we don't really know how to interact and move through these experiences. You know, that has really been something that I have been sitting with a lot. Um, and even, of course, the birthing process. Like, I decided to have a home birth and I was able to birth my baby on my bed by myself um, with the support of my husband. Um, and actually, so I feel like I really wanted to be really candid in this conversation because like I, in my personal evolution, am coming to this point where like I continually, and this is something that we all do, we continually have to meet the world with our truth, meet the world with our true self. And that can be really scary when our truth is so different um, than you know, what is accepted in the world, especially if we have been persecuted in the past. You know, so many of us have experienced that in past lives, you know. And so it could be really scary to hold these energies and to experience things authentically. Um, it's like, of course, I've gone through just really deep pits of intense grief and sadness. Like, this is like an experience that my body had to have. And in fact, um, my whole experience was extraordinarily galactic. Like, I experienced this whole, let's say, my whole pregnancy and the whole experience of bringing Kara through to the physical has been extraordinarily shamanic and galactic, my whole experience. And actually, I'm pretty sure half the people in this room right now are the women that had partaken in my womb course that actually Kara channeled that I channeled with Kara when she was in my belly so I've been working with this being and it's like I have been working with her in spirit and I just continue to it's not an experience I haven't been integrating but of course you know when I have that level of awareness um, I, I'm processing things pretty quickly and it's actually pretty scary to like share with people because I'm scared that they're going to judge me. Like, you know, how could you even be happy right now? You know, like every time I share, like people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. And of course I am so sorry. Like my body is so sad. I miss her so much. I wish she could be here with me. But I also feel that she is here. I communicate with her and it's like, I, I also want to just, I also want to have the space to celebrate everything that she was able to do. Everything that she accomplished in the short time that she was here. It's like nothing short of incredible. Like I am so proud of this being for, you know, making the decision to do this, making the decision to come into the physical. And I feel very deeply that like she is my um, soulmate in a collective consciousness that many of us are part of. 
I have experienced a lot of my soul family members say like they're still communicating with her, that she's brought soul pieces in for them. Um, and this has happened for me and my husband um, immeasurably. <laughs> um, so it's been hard because I haven't really talked to many people about this. Because again, I really just tr truly want to have space to celebrate the amazing, even the amazing birth that we had. So she, I was in labor for two and a half hours. I did not really know I was in labor because <laughs> I haven't experienced it before. And then all of a sudden I just started screaming and I think my roommates were like, and then she just started crying. Like we didn't even know what's happening. Like I was, I felt like I just started laboring and I, I, w I touched down there and like her head was there already. And so this amazing thing, this amazing grid work actually happened during the birth. As she was coming out, it was like this incredible pain. And I have been researching about um, orgasmic birth, right? Some of you might have heard me talk about this concept that there are some people that have given birth and they've actually had just like the most incredible cosmic orgasm as the baby's coming out. And it's like absurd when we think about it, right? Like every single movie that we watch on TV and the TV shows and in health class in school have told us that it's just going to be this most awful experience ever. And here there are videos of these women having the most exquisite orgasms, earth shattering, cosmic orgasms. And so I, at you know, four months into my pregnancy, I was like, this is something I want to explore. And the way that I explore things is I just send it up to my higher self and my guides and I say, hey, I want to do this. Can you show me how to move towards that? And of course, the, immediately my body just started releasing pain in my lower body, especially in my cervix. Um, so in my, um, I think, Mechanics of Creation workshop that's also free on my um, YouTube channel, we talk about how the cervix is really a gateway of creation. And this is really important because we have a lot of suffering and pain on our planet, a lot. Um, almost everyone that lives on this planet is carrying some sort of heaviness and pain in our bodies. Right? And if we think about the cervix as a gateway, and how we treat birth as a culture, it kind of actually starts to make sense why we have a reality of pain. Because everybody is passing, passing through this gateway of extreme pain that, you know, sometimes we even numb with pharmaceuticals. So here's what happened. Um, as Kara was passing through the birth canal and again it happened so quickly my labor was two and a half hours total um, and again actually I, I prepared a lot I'd done a lot of shamanic work I was doing self-healing almost every day for many hours um, focusing on clearing this pathway so she could come through in pleasure instead of pain right it's like my guy showed me that I had to clear all this pain out of my lower body so that when she came out like my cervix could fully relax and open so that my hips could fully relax and open because our psoas is where we store most of our trauma. So I felt very prepared for this. And as she was coming through, I was very surprised that I was actually feeling a lot of pain. <laughs> I was like, I just like did all this work. How could this be? And of course, then I started seeing this amazing vision of this deep subconscious program that was really strong in our collective. And it's that actually women deserve to feel this pain because we are punished because we're the ones that caused humanity to leave the Garden of Eden. It's this subconscious, almost like a curse that has been placed on our collective consciousness. And when we think about it, it really makes sense. Like when women are not feeling, when women are not in the position of, when women are not respected as, the, the birth giving, the birther of reality upon this planet, the vessel of birth on this planet, we are kind of instantly degraded into a position that 
is below that which we truly is, which is a divine creator being. And of course, men are divine creator beings as well. But every single person on this planet came out of a woman, and that's just the truth. And that is not to take away from anything that the men do for us, but I'm really just expressing this appreciation that like if we love life, if we appreciate life, then we appreciate our mothers, then we appreciate, you know, women. And only then actually do we start to connect with the feminine mother beingness of our planet, of her life givingness. Right? And this is really the profound thing. And of course, we have so many unconscious programs. And this is like such a deep <laughs> program. Like some of you are like, well, I'm not even Christian. But again, we're not separate. And like that belief is very strong on this planet. So even if you say, oh, you know, I'm not Christian, like, it's very likely that that program, like, even if you say, like, like, if you knew if you have a program that says birth is painful and I can't do it and it's going to hurt so much, like, that leads back to this deeper root of, you know, what we're saying. And it's like this degrading of the woman from her place. And so the crazy thing is that Kara and I were able to begin transmuting this massive collective pain grid for all of the women on this planet and then by the time her little head came out I was pretty much in an orgasmic state <laughs> um, so that was an incredible experience and for the many days after or even a week or two after I didn't really have any space to honor that experience in fact I wondered if I was still a mother I wondered if I could still call myself a mother and if that I you know if that birth experience even still counts if anyone was going to like take it any seriously because she left but you know I feel very deeply that I do want to honor that experience because it was beautiful and we were able to accomplish that and we were able to sink deep into that experience of clearing that grid together and that is something that we did together. And so the days um, after she ascended, left her physical body, um, I had this like incredible download come through. It's like I couldn't even feel super, like I guess I wasn't like in my body and like in the 3D yet because she had just left and I was so close to her. I didn't sleep for two days and I just felt my whole head like expand i felt like my head was like the entire universe and she was everywhere i could feel her everywhere every tree every cloud every grass i felt her consciousness everywhere and this merged my consciousness with everything and i was just in the state of i don't know even what to call it <laughs> um and so when um, I felt like I had received some sort of upgrade to my crown chakra because I was just like so close to her. I guess I just like wanted to follow her wherever she went. And so when I came down from that, I fell into a deep, dark hole for about a week. Um, I didn't get out of bed. I just pretty much cried. I just, my physical body began to reject that um, feeling. Um, I started closing down my crown. I was just, my body was really angry. I felt a lot of rage. I was angry kind of at her, but I was more kind of even angry with God. And I was angry with myself. I was angry just like that she wasn't here anymore. And so I rejected all of that upgrading. And I just like spent a week in pain. And then through the processing of that grief um, that, you know, is ongoing and it comes in waves, um, about a week ago that upgrade started coming back and this time I felt like my body was more receptive to it. I felt like my body had rejected kind of the new DNA upgrade just because it was angry. It was almost like it had rejected an organ implant. It was very similar to that. And when it started coming back in, that new 
state of sensory, that new ability to perceive reality in a deeper way, in a more expanded way that started coming back. Um, and I felt my body just more ready and receptive to be with it. And since then, I feel like there is this deep level and sense of gratitude that I have not really felt before. You know, you guys have heard me talk about life and how we should revere and appreciate and love life. Well, it's like almost like the feelings that I have now about that teaching, which I think is now like really the crux of what I'm here to share this vibration of appreciation and connectedness to life, to the sacredness and divinity of life, to the sacredness and divinity of our being. Um, so I'm sitting here one morning eating eggs and I was just feeling so grateful that these eggs and these greens came, you know, from within five miles of my house. And that I felt so grateful that actually Kara inspired us, inspired us to get her a puppy. And then she left, but we still have the puppy. <laughs> and the puppy's kind of been carrying me through this experience because she's got a lot of baby energy and she's peeing. And I get to clean up her pee. And I'm like, this is kind of like changing a diaper. <laughs> so <laughs> it's actually just been really helpful. But yeah. I feel like what I'm left with, of course, there is still this sadness and this grief. My physical body just still misses her, you know, every day. Um, especially, you know, when I go to bed and I, I lie in bed and like, it's like my body remembers her being here and remembers what it was like to bring her through. And what is deeper is this sense of this deep gratitude and appreciation for life, which I think is just like such an important gift because, you know, we as a humanity, we really waste a lot of time and we waste time making money. We waste time wondering and worrying about money. We waste time doing things, trying to get money. And then we waste time trying to get money so we can stay alive so we don't die. But then we realized at the end that, you know, we weren't really alive. So what was all that for? <laughs> Why are we so scared of dying if we're not alive? And I think that's so pertinent with this whole coronavirus thing. You know, it's like really important for us to be encountering this energy of death. Um, and I feel like in a really important way, in a, in a really important context, like that is why, one of the reasons why humanity is going through this thing with the coronavirus is like, there might be a bunch of conspiracy theories, but there's always divine <laughs> ordinance. And so while the conspiracy theories might be true on some level, the greater truth is always that all experiences happen for us. And if we can see that in our own life, then we can begin to see that on a planetary level. Like, how is this experience serving us? And what is one way that we can perceive these experiences so that we can grow? And of course, this is one of the tenets that I live by. And I feel like, you know, it's really shaking us awake. Like, if I am so afraid to get this virus and die, what why is that like what is so valuable in my life that i have to feel so intensely about protecting it and then if we are feeling this fear of death does that encourage us to move in a way that's more in alignment with life does it help us move in a way that you know cares more about all the living creatures on this planet and the sustainability of our existence on it Right? All of these ex important questions, like if we're scared that this virus is going to kill us, well, what about mass extinction and deforestation? That is a very real thing that is happening too that could wipe us out as well. <laughs> and anyway, like 
are there things that are dying? Absolutely. One of the things that I started, it is kind of like a cosmic joke, like I chuckled. And, you know, a lot of you know that, that I am a gatekeeper. I do um, a lot of work in the astral plane. Clearing crap. <laughs> Clearing crap in the astral plane. All of the shitty emotional energies that people are not willing to look at. All of the pain and the fragmented souls that are trapped there from the wars and the bullshit and the craziness that happens, right? I spend a lot of time there. And so this is all different gradients of death energy. And I feel that these are fallen death energies because there is a very beautiful death energy as well. And I'm like, I guess like maybe this isn't fully integrated yet because I'm not being very articulate, but I'm sure you're understanding the transmission. Um, but the joke was that I thought like, I, I feel like I'm the grim reapers, grim reaper. Like, and I say that as in like, there are beings that are thriving off the suffering of others. And then there are beings that stand up to those beings and say, no, that is not okay. And um, I feel that we are all those beings. We're all the beings that are standing up to this potentially kind of big and scary system that exists as, you know, the government and the hospital and the education system, as the mass media. And of course, you know, on a higher dimension, it exists as well in the astral plane and how those planes have encouraged humans in this way so that this um, senseless suffering continues and they can profit off of that. Well, as I'm saying, we are all those beings that are standing up to that. I say that we are the answer to God's prayer in a way. You know, God sent us here. <laughs> People pray to God to heal, and then God said, you guys go down there, <laughs> right? So we are actually the answers to those prayers. We are here to heal and to cease that senseless suffering, and it begins with ourself. It begins with coming to terms with all the things that we have experienced and for the most part you know like there's always a we are always sovereign in the way that we choose to respond to things that hurt us and that cause us distress and i know that we're learning about that a lot with these tiny little no seams um you can't really see them but they're buffalo gnats and they have razors as teeth and i've got like 30 welts all over my body and you know it's like do I go into anger and distress and start yelling at them? Or do I just be like, okay, like I'm being bit by gnats right now. Like this is just what it is. But like, you know, I accept it. And on a much grander scale, we all experience, you know, different levels of suffering and distress. And, you know, if you have a device, an internet that you're watching this video on right now, probably have it pretty good. You probably have a space and time to process your stuff and thus then be able to actually hold space and be present for beings that don't have that luxury. You know, a lot of us love to post these sensational articles about these kids being rescued from underground bases and Hillary Clinton eats babies. You know, it's like, okay, like if we're really posting that stuff, like how deeply do we want to let that information in? How much do we want to integrate that there is this scary monster in the closet that wants to do terrible things to our innocence, every single one of us, right? Are we willing to go to the places in ourself that have felt taken advantage of or have felt attacked or wounded by this force that wants to defile our innocence? Are we willing to open our eyes to those feelings and actually then 
feel strong and courageous enough to face those feelings, to process those feelings, to recognize that virus in our collective, in our humanity. Only through that feeling, that lucidity, are we going to come with the solutions to help everyone, to liberate everyone and everything on this planet. It's actually the only way <laughs> is through it. And so in the end, I am left with this immense upgrade <laughs> um, that I rejected because I am in pain. And now I'm beginning to actually allow it back in because I did actually go through this like feelings of suicidal, like, oh, you know, Kara's not here. Like, there's no more. There's nothing else that is here for me. There, I don't want, there's nothing more here on this earth that, I want to live for. And when I sat with that feeling for a little longer, I realized that there was. And what that is, is my mission, is my purpose. And I think that if I actually left and, you know, committed suicide because I felt so bad, Kara would definitely kick my ass on the other side. <laughs> she would definitely. She is chiming in and saying she would hurt you very very badly and that's not what you're allowed to do well and you know what it's like i know that it's kind of a dark joke but we kind of have to like it's like we're not here to walk through the park and eat cupcakes <laughs> right i would love to do nothing and lounge on my couch and drink you know, kombucha and eat cupcakes and watch Netflix, but that is really not. <laughs> well, I did have cupcakes, actually. It was Brian's birthday yesterday. Um, we can do both. <laughs> we can have cupcake, cupcakes sometimes. <laughs> what I'm saying is <laughs> we have a job to do. <laughs> we have a purpose. And, you know, this fire has just totally come alive in me through this experience like this is what I'm here to do I'm here to assist humanity in getting free from this crazy crazy mofos literally that's that's a cosmic joke in and of itself motherfucker <laughs> because we're mother lovers we are mother lovers. <laughs> so, yep. I love you. <laughs> yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Things are intense. Things are intense. Things are not not intense. <laughs> and it's okay. Things are okay. It's okay that things are intense and we have each other. There's so many of us here on this planet. There's a hundred people on this call right now. All of us are here, you know, in this place of integrating mastery, all of you. And just with the people that are here right now, we can make such a massive shift on this planet. And you know, if we can, like, I really want to just like share this fire with you to be able to transmute this pain. And that's the other thing is that like there's these two parts of us, right? That's why my whole thing is called Earth Star is that there's this Earth part of ourself and then there's the star part of ourself. And the whole process that the Earth and humanity and all of us, we're the way showers, the leaders in this process is the merging of those two aspects. And the earth self have just, it's, it's a part that have been experiencing this separation experiment for a long time, that have lived, you know, experiencing and being, um, feeling as if we are actually completely separate. And I, I don't know how we made it through that one. It was really tough. But now we can reconnect and re-remember and realize that we're actually not separate at all. And so as, you know, I say that Kara has ascended just into the fourth dimension, but she actually 
is part of a soul group that came um, from at least 15. So that's like angelic realm. And so when she, she wanted to actually penetrate into the 3D before she anchors into the 4D so that she can help us move into that place. And here's how I'm experiencing it in my physical body is that I feel this expanded part of me that is extraordinarily excited and happy and completely at oneness and peace <laughs> with everything that's happened. And then there's this earth part of me that is still in complete separation that doesn't understand that at all. And this earth part is just like in so much pain and agony and crying. And like, as that, as these higher aspects of me are reaching down and consoling and teaching the earth parts of myself that everything is okay, that life doesn't end after death, that we are all still very much deeply connected in oneness, that as this earth part of myself is integrating and merging with those frequencies is actually opening up and I'm literally feeling my body lose density through this process and it's amazing because actually before Carol was even conceived like two months before was when she first came to visit me and when she first came she had three pairs of red wings and she opened her hand up and this fire came out and she said mom I'm going to teach you how to materialize things from thin air <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> I'm ready, come on in. And so when she left, I said, Kara, you never taught me, like you just left. And so one day I'm wallowing in my pain. I want to transmute this, like I'm, everything sucks, like screw this, I, I can't do it. And of course, you know, I, I give myself some time in it, but Kara doesn't let me wallow in that very much. And actually, in fact, that's why I decided to even do this live stream because she really wants me to just get back to work. <laughs> She's like, mom, we got a job. I'm right here. Like, let's just get back to work. Like, we don't have time for this. Like, there are people suffering. Like, we got to get back to work. And so I'd be wallowing and Carol would come in. She would encourage me, you know, like, just like, just do the work. You know how to meditate. You know how to transmute energy. Like, you've been doing this for lifetimes. Like, just do it. And so one day, you know, finally after she had encouraged me, I just, I was like, okay, I can do it. So I started feeling into this expansion that I was experiencing, my consciousness, this oneness, and I allowed that to start to alchemize with this pain and this lower self, that, this physical earthly self, not bad, not worse, just, you know, more dense part of myself. And as that alchemy happened, I realized this was actually pulling my physical body into a higher dimension aka ascension and I realized that if I could allow this process to fully envelop me then I would be able to materialize something from thin air <laughs> and so then when this clicked I heard this giggling rip across the sky and she kind of was like good job you got it <laughs> can't materialize anything yet Um, but, you know, that is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about ascending into a different density. We're talking about the transformation that can actually occur in our body. We're talking about the amount of cosmic consciousness that these vessels can actually hold, that we can actually experience. And, you know, as... I'm just so grateful that you're all here to kind of help me integrate this as well because again, there are parts of myself that are afraid to talk about it because there are just these, and it's even funny to even mention it now, it's just like silly to mention it, you know, all of those people in 3D who are like, okay, we got to wear all black and be super sad, you know, and like, it's almost like this act, it's like, oh, somebody died, this is how we need to act, and um, this funny moment happened, um, actually, the, one of the most profound moments was that when we got her body back from the examiners in the city, I decided and chose to take her out of the body bag and wrap her in a blanket myself. And I chose this because I felt like it was very important that I was the last person to touch her body. 
And this again comes to this like human and shamanic and connected and earth, this earth part of me. Yeah, I, I want to um, accentuate that this earth part of ourself is not a worse or bad part of ourself. Because this is the part of ourself that truly experiences and appreciates the aliveness of physicality. And that actually, you know, it's really like an, an ascension process for that part and not a decimation. But that part of me just really took over and said, I need to do this. Like I created this being, I created this body. I need to be the last person to also to, to, to touch this body if I needed to, you know, have this burial. And I feel like that was a really profound experience because again, I have not come into contact or come into that close encounter with death at all. So, you know, this is how we did things, you know, in the indigenous cultures all over the world. We didn't have, you know, funeral homes that cremated the bodies for you. We didn't have funeral homes that picked up the body and put makeup on it, <laughs> right? It's like we want to dress it up. We don't want to see decomposition. We don't want to see death. We're super scared of it. And it's like that is a part of the cycle of life. And... It's the same thing with birth, with, you know, the painkillers and the different medications. Like, there was a moment when I felt fear, like, when the baby was coming out, that it would rip me in half. And I have heard others. It's a very common fear in birth giving. And then, actually, what I noticed was, it's like I, I was holding her head in with my muscles. I was holding her in because I was scared that she would rip me. And then I, I just kind of was like, okay, I just have to let go. And when I let go... I still, I still, she still didn't just immediately come out. And I realized that my body was really smart, that my body knew exactly what she was doing. And that actually, if I just allowed my body to do what she wanted, like she was just like kind of doing this pulsing thing where she was pushing her out a little bit at a time so that I could expand and so that I, my body um, wouldn't hurt itself. So that level of connection and trust to our body is our connection to life as well. And as we begin to notice how severed from the cycle of life and death we are, we realize that fear of death is something that can be used to control us and to mind control us into submission. And that really the only way out of that is to begin to connect with our sense of aliveness and connect with the things that are alive and to feel into death and how precious it makes life. <laughs> like how amazing it is that we have all been gestated inside of a woman and then we were all birthed into this reality and we all lived enough that our body grew to a place where it, it, it can take care of itself and here we are. That these trillions of cells and organs and bones in our body are operating in resonance with the earth encouraged by the air elementals and the water elementals so that we can experience cosmic consciousness. Like, that is amazing and that reminds me of this man I can't remember who was the guy that wrote the God delusion or something like even not Stephen Hawking he's like uh he's like uh one of these old white professors who are in charge of science <laughs> at some university I can't remember his name but anyway he pretty much have dictated that spirit doesn't exist, that everything happened by accident, and it's just absolutely assert like that is actually what satanic reality is. Richard Dawkins, thank you. <laughs> right? 
What is a satanic reality is one void of life, is one where there's no respect and reverence to life. Because what is life? Life is the divine in experience, the divine in physicality. Life is the essence of divinity, of, should I say that divinity is the essence of life. And so when we create a whole reality that feels no respect and no reverence and no love and no connection to the sacredness of life, that is what I would call a satanic reality. Because when you take that to the ultimate expression, the extreme end of the scale, you know, what kind of being would you know, sacrifice or, you know, buy a child, trafficked child, like what kind of consciousness would do that? Because a child is like the emanation of life itself, right? Of this innocence. So if we can say like, you know, there are satanic groups and satanic rituals, then, you know, we start to notice that the watered down version of the satanic ritual is everywhere. And I know that is really hard. I know that is really hard to awaken to, really hard to see with open eyes. I understand. I have, you know, been trying to integrate and trying to strengthen my spirit for many years, you know, when I first found out about Pizzagate and whatnot, all that stuff, two, three years ago. It's hard to come into acceptance of that stuff, it is. Especially when you're an empath, especially when you're you know, an elemental being incarnate as a human and you love life so much. It's especially hard for us because we feel so much love and beauty for everything and it's hard to watch you know, these people cutting the trees down and killing everything and all of this chaos, is, it becomes even harder to come to terms with all of that. But, you know, that's why this transmission is called mastery in the time of the solstice eclipse window, because we're really being called to recognize that we can. We have so many skills and experiences that we've gathered in our previous lifetimes. We were made for this. You know, we came here at this time to this planet specifically to do this. I almost see that, you know, it's almost like we're covering this planet with almost like a hospital. Like every time I take a plant medicine like ayahuasca, I begin to see the ways that there's a hospital energy going on. Not like a false matrix, stupid hospital where all the doctors are incompetent and robots. I mean like an actual hospital, which is like an energy of healing and restoration. There is this strong field around the earth of regeneration, which is what we're experiencing. So in 3D, that can express itself in any number of ways, like chaos or people waking up. And, you know, we're actually the ones that are navigating that, we're choosing what timeline that we're on, we're creating the reality that we're in. And for me, you know, that's always creating the most peaceful timeline as possible. So I guess, you know, when I, I always like to say that these are only words and it's actually an energy that is being transmitted and that it isn't, um, when we receive the energy, it is something that we feel. Um, and that feeling is of merging with the collective consciousness and also recognizing that there is an extra stellar energy that is here to help us collectively to heal. And what are we healing? The effects of planetary enslavement. I say planetary sexual enslavement. Um, and you can, again, go to that video called Sexuality and Creation, because in short, our sexual energy is our creative energy. It's how our physical body experience cosmic creative energy. 
And so when we see this degradation and pornographic media sexualizing children in, you know, Hollywood and whatnot, like we understand that they're trying to distort our relationship with creation itself, right? It is that deep. It is that serious. I know it's hard to integrate, but it, we need to go there. So I highly recommend actually going to watch that video because it's very good. Um, and I like to explain things in that kind of frank and straight cut but simple way. It's really important for us to awaken to that um, integration so that we can actually fully reclaim our creative energy. That's the most important thing. How are we going to create a new world if our creative sexual energy is locked up or stuck or still sending energy into the demon realm. <laughs> you can get on some true story there. That's not any fake news. So thank you for all the 111 people that are here, that are tuning in, hearing me speak, sharing my heart, and holding space, and choosing the warrior path. The peaceful warrior, yes. Thank you for that. The peaceful warrior path. The peaceful the warrior. The healing <laughs> to occur on multiple levels. And bridge the gap of unity and togetherness. <laughs> yes, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I think I'm going to sing a little more. Do you guys want to, like, do some... Come here? Ruquan's like, no. <laughs> come on. These guys have been holding space over here. <laughs> and just as a side note, like, I've received a lot of beautiful messages from like everyone on um, my Facebook and my email. And like, is this like, I even had one person that emailed me and said, it's hard for me to know what to say, um, except, you know, the general response of I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it's like, this is imbalance because like, I got like 300 messages where people were like, I'm so sorry. And only like a hundred messages of people being like, I'm so sorry, and, and, you know, there's this beautiful thing, and I, I just wanted to add that, you know, Kara, she was born on the day that the earth, the sun, and the Pleiades were in exact alignment, um, she came in, so after she hopped into the crab constellation, she came through the Cygnus constellation on that day, through the Pleiadian gateway, so, um, and then on that day was also the Mayan dream spell of the yellow human, which, Free will is their ultimate superpower. Um, and so I'm thinking like, you know, I lived till I'm this old and all of you are here. There's no part of me that has slipped into any level of a fear timeline where something out of alignment with the divine has happened. Like that's just not my life has been. My life for the last seven years has just been absolute dictation of what the spirit what spirit and higher self has created and has guided like there's no part of that that's misaligned and so there's just no room for an accident like that i mean for example brian's mom has cooked him this specific kind of birthday cake his whole life and then my roommates went to the grocery store and just coincidentally got him that specific flavor of cupcake like there are no accidents <laughs> like it's just like if that can happen if that little thing can happen, then, like, you know, I know that Kara chose this. And I know that may sound absolutely bonkers to some people. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, yes, my body feels an incredible amount of pain. Yes, I'm feeling an incredible, incredible amount of grief and the amount of life and you know this energy that we're sharing in right now this um, this fire like all of these th 
things, <laughs> this ultimate teaching of merging with the higher realms, these windows of multidimensional realm merging, all of these things have been gifted us through this experience. And I, I also want to hold space for the celebration and the honoring of that. Like, how incredible has this experience been? So thank you all for being here with us. We love you so much. We are going to radically transform, evolve, renovate this planet in two to three generations. That is what we have chosen to come here to do. And we are not going to do it through our sheer will. We are going to do it through our embodiment of our divinity, our ultimate capabilities of creation as the creator beings that we are. And under this moon of cooperation, I hope you share your heart and your love with the people around you. And truly treasure the time that you have with them because life is a treasure and life is a miracle. Let's see here.
<laughs> it's really hard to see my smiling face because I look like her. <laughs> and she's saying that. Um, yeah, it just really feels like she's a part of me that has merged into my light body and like it's really a weird experience because it's like I it's almost like she is speaking through me and it's just really confusing and hard for my human body to even understand what's happening but it's like when I see my face, I see her and she's smiling and radiating her spirit through me and I would love to receive any feedback from what you are experiencing so that I can understand better what is happening. <laughs> and with that, feeling complete. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Sheila Rain, my angel friends who are here, and Yu Quan, our beautiful angels who are here in oneness together. Um, please reach out if you're feeling inspired and in love, and if you feel like sharing with me any shifts that you are experiencing through this transition. Bye for now.